If you haven't already started programming your LEGO Mindstorms robot, this uh, little introduction might help you get going. It's pretty frustrating uh, if you don't know what you're doing, and this will just make it a bit easier. Let's take a look at the computer screen and see how to get going. So when you first start up the Mindstorms interface, you get a screen something like this. It doesn't tell you what to do, what to click on. Uh, what you need to know is you want to click on the plus up here or open a recent project if you've already done one. But clicking the plus will open up a new window on which you can drag and drop um, graphical elements called blocks which will be assembled in and compiled to make a program that will uh, make the brain of the uh, Lego robot work. So here's how you do it. This is the starting block. You can actually have more than one. If you have more than one, they both, when you click on one of them, they'll both start simultaneously and go through the blocks one at a time. These are the blocks down here, the bottom of the screen. There's a whole library. Each different tab here has a different set of blocks associated with it. And there's even a block with nothing in it, which is for you to uh, create your own uh, self-designed blocks. We're going to start with the action blocks. If you just mouse over it, you'll see it says action right there, so you know what it is. The next blocks over are flow control blocks, and the third one is sensor blocks, and you'll be using all of those probably uh, in your first project. So I'm going to add an action block and I'm going to choose this one which says, if we mouse over it, it says move steering. Click on it, drag it up and let it go near there. A block has, every block has several modes, well almost every block has several modes. Each mode changes what you need to, to set to get it to do what you want it to do. So there's a mode which is the leftmost uh, choice here. You're going to choose a mode and then there will be settings for that mode which determine what the action or what uh, what the program will accomplish. So I'm going to choose from this. You can see there are five different ones and the one that was by default is on for rotations which means that you'll turn on the motors and they will do a certain number of rotations. Um, I'm going to change it to on for seconds, like that, and notice it added uh, an additional thing out here. This first choice is, do you want it to go straight ahead or do you want it to turn? So I'm going to set it to turn a little bit to the right, so I've dragged it down and you can see the arrow makes it, makes now bends to the right, which means that the robot will turn to the right. The next one is a power, some sort of power equivalence that ranges from 0 to 100. Uh, actually, it ranges from 0 to either plus or minus 100, so you could go in reverse as well. Uh, I'm going to leave it at, uh, oh, maybe uh, 56 will do. And then, since I chose to be on for a certain amount of time, uh, I have to type in a value of how many seconds I want it on, and I'll put, type in 5 seconds like that. Um, and then this last thing tells the program, what do you want to do when you get to the end? Uh, do you want to stop or do you want to coast? And uh, the, the first one is stop and it will stop abruptly. If you're trying to do precise turns, that's the one to do. So now that's a program all by itself. All of this if you're hooked up to your robot and connected, will be uh, an action. Let's try it out. All right, I've connected the robot. This is, it's shown in, in this box here. Shows you the status, it shows it's connected. Um, I'm going to choose a different display. I want to see what the connections are. So I will go to uh, this one. Um, and this one, you can see here, I have two motors and I have two sensors on this robot. And if you want to see what the readings for the sensors are, uh, they are shown above the icon for the sensor. And you can also tell something about the motors. Um, you'll learn more about that later. 
So this is very helpful if you're trying to figure out what's going on. Now I'll give it a run. So I will click go. The robot will chime and it's going forward and turning to the right and I had it go too long. You'll probably make that mistake or something similar to that too. I make those mistakes all the time. It's no big deal. You can stop it by typing control B, which breaks the program, or by clicking on, uh, let's see, the stop button over here on the right hand side. So let's uh, make some additions to this program. I'm going to add another action thing. This one will be a sound. So I'm just going to drag it onto the end here and drop it so it's connected. And as usual, you have to choose which mode you want. And I don't want to play a file, which is the default. I want instead to play a tone, which is just, or, or you could play a note. Either one would be okay. And it asks you, what frequency do you want? I'm going to use 440, which is a concert A on the piano, if you're familiar with that. The time, one second is plenty. Uh, the loudness is going to be as maximum loudness is 100, so it's going to be pretty loud. And the, over here, something you, that's sort of important. First time I tried this, I didn't get the right value. It's a choice of what do you want to do at the end. If you choose zero, the program doesn't stop, doesn't go on to the next step, which in this case means stop. It doesn't stop until it's finished playing the note. If you choose um, one, it will play it once, and, but once it starts playing it, it will stop immediately. So you'll hear a click instead of a note because it doesn't take it very long to start the note and then stop the program. If you do this, it'll play the note over and over again, which is not desirable either because it will drive everybody crazy. So let's give this a try and let's see what happens. I'm going to shorten my time interval uh, to two seconds for the uh, motor. And this way it won't run off the table and we'll give it a try. Here we go. To the right, beep. Okay, so the program was successful. That should be enough to get you started. I'm sure you'll find many things to explore, but you can string more and more of these together and there's some very complicated blocks. So you should take a look through the library and see what the different blocks are. And if you have questions, you can ask or you can explore. It's a great way to work out problem solving and you'll figure out how to do complex tasks by putting together these programming elements called blocks.